Hey everyone, it's Colin with Legalized Mystery Productions. Thank you for joining me and welcome. Today I'm going to be doing the second of our basing scheme series. And today I'm going to be doing uh, desert basing. So a really nice, natural, light, kind of orangish yellow uh, desert. And for this tutorial, I'll be using the bases that were made in the simple base construction video uh, that I posted back in September. So uh, if you want to know how to make these bases, go back and check that out. Uh, very straightforward, but as you can see, it gives you a really nice natural texture. And this is a very flexible uh, base to then paint any number of different uh, schemes. So uh, basing series one, we did kind of a blackened scorched earth, and we also did a red earth scheme. And today we're going to be doing a desert scheme. And we're going to be doing this, um, I'm going to do one base without pigments, and I'll probably throw some pigments on the second base just to see how we can kind of play with that. Um, but if you want to know how to build these bases, uh, go back to that tutorial video. Uh, I've got a couple of skulls on there. Uh, they're Tau skulls, which is totally random and not on purpose at all. Um, my my uh, love for Tau is <laughs> well documented. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using these four um, natural tones to get the kind of base color for our bases. So I have Vallejo Model Color Flat Earth, Vallejo Model Color Orange Brown, Yellow Ochre, and Sand Yellow. And so we have like a true brown, kind of orangish, you know, brown, uh, desaturated orange yellow ochre, and then this sand, which is a very, very light kind of yellowish tan color. And what we're going to do well, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these if I can find a brush that's going to work for me. Yeah. So we're going to take those colors and we're going to put them in our palette. And you can see we have a nice progression from the brown to the orange to the yellow to this kind of tan color here. We want to thin these down just a little bit so that they're more kind of workable. But not too much. That might have been a little much. And flat earth. That, uh... Sand yellow is pretty thin out of the bottle, so we're going to leave that alone. But essentially what we're going to be doing is just kind of mashing these colors around, around these bases to get a natural look. So when you're painting natural elements, a variation and... Um, randomness is going to give you a more natural finish rather than kind of planning things out in stages and um so you'll see i'm not even i'm not even taking the previous color off the brush when i go and get the next color i'm just kind of eh, wet wet blending i guess is the is the technique but Actual wet blending is a little bit more precise than, than what we're doing here. Um, but what we are doing is we are making sure that we're getting good coverage, but that we're going in and we're letting these paints, we're letting these paints mix kind of at the edges of where they're interacting with other colors, but not just making one big mess of kind of warm color on the base, uh, if that makes sense. So we want to make sure that we're not just mixing all these colors together, but that, but that they are kind of blending in where they meet. And the overall effect is going to be there we go. The overall effect is going to be that 
it gives you this multi-tonal, very cool, kind of natural, very natural look to the ground. Um, and this is something that, as you can see, is very easy to achieve. Um, the, the key is that all of these colors that I chose for this base are all the same tone. They're all the same kind of temperature, um, where they're all warm. It's a very warm brown. It's very, oops, you know, orange, obviously yellow, but all those tones kind of work together to give you this really nice kind of multi-tonal, um, base for your color. So now we'll go on the 40 mil and basically just do the same thing as the 32 dries. And then we're going to paint the rocks and the skulls. We're going to paint the rocks and we're going to do dry brushing and then we'll paint the skulls. It's actually the second time I've filmed this. The first time I forgot to unmute my microphone. So it was not terribly helpful uh, without audio. But I also forgot to dry brush before I painted the skulls and it didn't, it didn't quite work. So always learning lessons, even on things that I've done a bunch of times. So this is a, this is a basing scheme that I did for my old Adeptus Mechanicus army. Um, I have some models that I've been commissioned to do to add to that army. So I'll be doing this basing scheme again. Um, that army is blue. They have light blue robes. Um, so it's really cool to do this kind of warm scheme underneath, um, not enough orange in, in right here. So it's really cool to do this kind of warm scheme underneath like a cooler army scheme, uh, which provides a really nice contrast to to those blue robes in that army. Um, you know, you see like ultramarines on the Martian red basing and, and stuff like that. It's kind of the same, kind of the same idea with the, with this warm desert basing, but not as, not as red, you know, that kind of Martian red that gets really uh, intense when you see it on, on basing, especially under a colder model. Uh, the Ultramarines army that I've been adding to over years and years is on that Martian red basing and it looks great. Uh, but if you're looking for something a little less, a little less contrasty, this is a really good option. Um, it also works for, you know, red, um, green. I mean, it's just a very, very flexible black. I mean, it's a very flexible uh, basing scheme, this desert basing. And that looks really good. And, and you know, it's it's random. Let's blend, let me blend that a little bit. Um, you know, it's totally random. And it has a nice variation in it. Not, not one color, just too prominent. Um, it just has a really nice really nice look to it. Super happy with that. I'm going to dry those out just a little bit. Kind of help those along. And that won't take long to dry. And when I, uh, when I, in painting bases, I usually do you know, 10, 20 at a time. So, so this is Vallejo model color buff, and this is an even lighter kind of tan yellow than the yellow sand. And this is what we're going to use to pick out the rocks here. So we're just going to pick out each one of these rocks. We're not going to be too worried about getting you know, up and under every single rock. We still want that kind of basing tone underneath. So 
toe, picked out the routes. And this is really thin, so we might do a second, might do a second pass with this or not. See what happens when it dries. Yeah, so you can see it's a little, a little splotchy. So we'll just do a quick second coat on there. Same on this one. And then we're going to take, <clears throat> excuse me. And then we're going to take Agrax Earthshade, all reliable. And We are going to just do the rocks with the Agrax. We're not washing the whole base. We don't need to. Uh, we're just going to be doing the rocks. And we just want to darken those down a little bit and then just the dry brush and the majority of the basing will be done. I wasn't kidding when I said this is a very straightforward, very simple scheme, um, but it's one that is really effective um, especially if you start adding just a couple little tufts and, and things like that here and there um, it's a really nice it's a really nice little scheme so uh, the, while the agrax is drying we're going to take Vallejo model color ivory and we're going to add that to the buff that we used for the rocks and we want this to be very very pale I know that looks almost white on the camera, and it, but it's not white. It's still, like you can still see some of that yellow in there, and that's why we use the buff, and that's why we use the ivory, is to keep, is to keep some of that yellow. Because we don't want to obviously just do, you know, white. So that looks pretty dry. I'll keep moving the base. There we go. Uh, so now I'm going to take my big my big GW dry, dry brush. And just do an overall pretty light. Eh, that's too light. Got a little more paint on there. There we go. So overall, just very light. And this is going to highlight, just like we did on the other bases, this is going to highlight not only the base, but also the rocks. And kind of integrate everything and it's going to help to blend those underlying colors together on the edges to where you get a really nice natural looking base. Let's see. Oh, there we go. That's better. So that's a really nice, I really like that base. Um, and again, very, very straightforward, very simple. But it gives you a really nice scheme to then work off of. You know, if you wanted to add some tufts um, just for variation, or you wanted to add um, some pigments, I didn't. I don't usually add pigments to this because it it messes with the kind of underlying browns and browns and yellows and everything that we got going on on the base. 
Um, typically, I just leave these alone. Um, but we'll add we'll add a few, and we'll see how that affects <clears throat> we'll see how that affects um, those bases. So for the skulls, I'm doing a base of German camo beige, World War II. Um, I've changed how I paint skulls a lot over the years. Um, this is my current favorite way to paint skulls just because it gives a really nice kind of old skull look with the brownish. There's almost like a little green in this as well. Um, and I just really like how neutral, oops, I really like how neutral these skulls end up looking uh, when they're painted in this way. So while that is dry, while those elements are drying, I'm going to go ahead and get my pigments, which I probably should have been closer at hand. Oops. And looking through, <coughs> excuse me, looking through the, the pigments that I have, I use secret weapon pigments um, for the majority of the ones I use. Um, AK also makes really good pigments. Vallejo makes some pigments. Um, but I typically use um, secret weapon. So we have this kind of dark yellow kind of dark yellow pigment that's very much fitting with what we're working on. Um, there's this burning sands, which I really like. Um, very, very light, kind of tan, sandy color. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then dark earth might be a little bit much. Mm. Terracotta would be good. So then this terracotta, which is a really nice, really really nice color. It's one of my favorites. Uh, this yellow earth, I'm not, I'm not going to use. This is kind of too green for what I want to do today. So picked out a few pigments, and it looks like. That is dry, so we're going to go grab some of that Agrax Earth Shade and just shade those skulls. Easy peasy. Let that dry. And then while that's drying, so we're going to be using those pigments. And to apply those, I use these kind of old, not that one, this kind of old tattered brushes. These are natural hair brushes. Um, these are dime a dozen at the craft store. Um, because we're putting pigments on a textured surface, it just eats away at the bristles and that's fine. Um, these don't last very long and they don't have to. So uh, these I'll be using to apply the pigments. And then this is the brush that I use to apply the pigment fixer. Um, also a natural brush. And for pigment fixer, I love uh, Soilworks Terrain Fixer from Scale 75. Um, Abtalone 502 also makes a terrain fixer that's really good. Um, MIG has a pigment fixer that's pretty good. It's good. Um, I just think either the Abtalone 502 or the Scale 75 are the two best. And... Um, the thing about pigment fixer is it goes on after everything else. So if you put a bunch of pigments on a model and then matte varnish the model, it'll kill the pigment. Um, it'll just wipe out those kind of colors for whatever reason. I'm not quite sure. But um, if you matte varnish everything and you get everything done, the tufts, everything, uh, and then you go back and add some pigments, if you use a, a pigment fixer, it's actually an acrylic fixer, and it seals in those pigments, it evaporates and it seals in the pigments so they don't really rub off, they don't uh, 
you know, just get knocked off the model. Uh, these things are super, super, super messy. So I'm going to show you how to kind of mitigate um, how messy pigments are, but they're very, very, very messy and they will destroy anything they touch, uh, clothes, carpet, anything. Um, so you have to be very, very, very careful when using pigments. Uh, my in-laws carpet at their former townhouse still has pigments in the carpet from like eight years ago. Um, because it's literally just paint. Oh, sorry. This is a uh, deck tan. And this is what I'm going to be using to highlight the skulls. Um, cause it's actually just paint pigment without the, without the binder that's made into paint. So when it spills on clothes or carpet or something like that, it literally dyes the fibers of, of whatever it hits. So it's not like getting them dirty. It's literally dyeing the fibers a different color. Um, so you have to be extraordinarily careful when you're handling pigments um, for, for models. Um, I've learned the hard way <clears throat> that it is, there is no coming back from spilling those things on the carpet. So my wife doesn't even like me having them in the house. <laughs> so, uh, but I've, I've gotten very, very careful. So we're just going to add a little bit of ivory to that deck tan to kind of lighten it up and do some, some last little highlights on just kind of getting around the eye sockets and the brow, kind of the brow ridge and either side of the ridge there for this dead little towel. And then just a little bit on top of the skull there and maybe a little bit of mostly ivory. So we're not getting a lot of contrast there. So a little bit of mostly ivory. But I don't want this, so I'm not going for that like totally white bleached skull look on these skulls. I want something a little, they still look like skulls, but they're not, that bleached been sitting in the sun forever look. So that's it for painting these bases. And as you can see, that's a really nice looking base. I really like that base. I would be more than happy to put a ton of miniatures on those bases, and I have. Um, but if we want to, so let's do the black rim on the 32, and actually, and for painting my base rims, I always use uh, Formula P3 Thamar Black. Just, it's such a soft black. Um, and at this point, I think partly it's also just kind of superstition on my part. Um, but it is such a soft black. I really like it. Um, but it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter, um, what black you use, you know, chaos black is fine, but I really like the Mar black, um, just for how soft it is. It's a very kind of small distinction, but. Uh, and I always paint my base rooms black. I never paint them a different color. I just think it, it really frames, it really frames the miniature well. Um, and it sets it apart from kind of the tabletop itself. Um, I never do, I never do a colored base rim. A colored base rim also introduces another color into the paint scheme. Um, which is superfluous to the paint scheme. It doesn't contribute to the paint scheme. So I'm always hesitant to add more colors that don't have to do with the model. They're just kind of there. So, so that looks really nice. I'm really happy with that base right there. Very, very cool. I'll probably put some, you know, tutorial miniature on that before I give it away. And then now we are going to come into pigment territory with the 40 millimeter base. And for that, 
we're going to use gloves. And then I'll use a box top or something. I always have a paper towel underneath it. Um, even in, like I have, um, you know, like everybody, I have a lot of these boxes lying around that I use for priming and whatever. I'll usually put the pigments inside this and line this with paper towels. Uh, but for the sake of filming, I'm going to do it kind of out in the open. Uh, which is a little risky, but I'm willing to take that risk for you guys. So uh, we have our finished painted base, and then we're going to open up these pigments here. And so similar, similar colors to what we've already been painting, but kind of punched up a notch. Uh, they're not as neutral. These are very kind of vibrant. Uh, colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply these dry and then apply the fixer to the pigments. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this kind of nubbed, beat up brush and we're just going to dip it into the pigment just a little bit. Like you can see how little pigment is actually on there. So we're just going to dip it into the pigment. And for like this terracotta, I'm going to concentrate more in the areas that already have some of that orange. So I'm going to concentrate and we're just adding a little bit, a little bit of this stuff goes a very, very long way. Um, so we're just adding a little bit and we want to kind of mash it in. Then we're going to go get some of this dark yellow and we're going to concentrate kind of more in the areas that already have that buff color, or not buff, but the um, yellow ochre and the yellow sands. We're going to kind of concentrate in those areas. And the downside of the pigment is we're not going to get as much, not necessarily going to get as much variation as we had with the underlying coat, but it's going to be, and then we'll get some a little bit of this burning sands because this stuff is potent. Uh, this really light and this we're kind of we're just kind of mashing just pick up a little bit and really just mash it to give it kind of that granular you can see hopefully you can see how grainy this burning sands is and that gives a really nice texture to the base so we don't want to cover up all our previous work. We definitely don't want to cover up all the rocks and everything. We just want to give it a little bit of granularity, a little bit of texture. And you can see how much of this is just falling off the base. This is why I always work over paper towels. And that'll be pretty much it. Um, so then we're going to close these and put those away immediately. And then we're going to get our pigment fixer, <clears throat> excuse me, terrain fixer. <clears throat> excuse me. My goodness. This congestion just will not go away. So we're going to load up the brush with the terrain fixer, pigment fixer, and we're just going to tap on the Tap on the base and let the kind of capillary action draw the fixer out of the brush. I'm not pushing on this or, or manipulating it in any way. I'm just, just lightly touching the base and making sure to get the whole base kind of covered there. Looks good. And that's it for that. And put this off to the side because now those, those that pigment's not going to go anywhere. And what I do is I then fold this up like so, get it in, kind of hold it in the glove, get that in the glove, and then tie it off so that that pigment. Just
just isn't getting anywhere. And then I throw that away. Because they're really that it's really that important to, to keep a handle on on those pigments. And then I'll close that up. And then I will because I have an acrylic topper underneath underneath on top of my desk. I don't want to do the So this is going to dry out. Pigment fixer just naturally evaporates. But this is going to dry it out way, way, way faster. Without melting my desk. And here you can see, now that we've done that pigment work, you kind of just get a little bit more crunch a little bit more vibrant color. So if you put that next to this kind of washed out desert here, um, it's just a little different tone. It's a little different and we'll paint, we can paint the rim of that black too to get a, a good idea of, get a nice frame on that. You can kind of see a little better. And you can see I'm handling I'm handling the pigments and everything without gloves anymore because now that that fixer is dried, that stuff isn't going anywhere. Um, some people say you can use isopropyl alcohol and stuff like that as a fixer. It's not, it's not at all the same thing and it's not nearly as effective as this kind of binding, the binding agent that is the pigment fixer. So I definitely cannot recommend highly enough using an actual pigment fixer to do kind of pigment work. Um, Cause you want to actually handle these models. Um, versus like a display where, you know, if you're not able to touch the areas that are pigmented, it's not, not a big deal. <clears throat> Excuse me. And one of the, one of the advantages to using those pigments on your bases is that you're then able to, um, kind of use dust the feet a little bit on, on models and things like that to kind of get, uh, integrate the model into the base a little bit more. So that's one advantage to using pigments. The other advantage is just to kind of get a little bit more saturated tones out of the, out of the basing. But either one of these are really nice basing schemes, a really nice, uh, uh, desert schemes. So this is, you know, sans pigment, um, you know, you don't need pigment to get a really great base. I mean, this is a, this is a really nice, this would make a really nice basing scheme for an army. Um, but if you want to get something a little more colorful, you know, get a little more kind of saturation going, you know, throw some pigments on there. Um, you can even come in and just do like the burning sands, just do a little bit of that white yellow pigment and just leave it at that. Um, so there's a lot of options to play with, but you have a really good base to work off of with just the, the basic, just paint scheme. Um, so hope you found it interesting. If you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment or shoot me a message. Always happy to answer any questions that you have. And, uh, you know, I have a couple more schemes that I want to knock out with the, um, with this simple base construction. And then I want to do another base construction video where we add some more elements, uh, to those, the base construction, and uh, just get a little different look and, and some height and things like that. So thanks again and uh, stay tuned for series three, uh, which will be coming, uh, you know, pretty soon. I love doing basing, so uh, there will be plenty of these to come. So thanks as always. Thank you for your support and uh, we'll see you soon.